In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, we are witnessing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being approached by a young ruler, a ruler of the faith, of the Old Testament. And what was his question? It was, good Lord, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? How many of us today are addressing this question to God or to themselves. And I'm telling all of us, but he was young. How many of us, our young adults or young people are seeking the kingdom of God in today's world? And the answer that our Lord and Savior is giving to him is pretty simple. What are you reading in the law? Don't lie, don't commit adultery, don't bring false witnesses, love your father and your mother. So very simple things, right? But these things in our modern time are very diffi difficult to accomplish. So let's stop on the last one that they said, love your father and your mother. This is a very big problem in now days, in today's world. And Apostle Paul had prevented us about these things. He told his disciple Timothy, saying that at the end times, there would not be any more respect towards, from the children, children towards their parents. And it's pretty obvious in our days, right? They are leaving their families and They, they don't even call the parents, not visiting. We're not talking about visiting. They're not calling them. Just ask, mom, dad, how are you? How is your health? How are you doing? So, but not talking about those that are thrown in, in those houses for the old people, right? That never are visited by, by, by anyone. I have visited many and said, Father, I don't nobody is visiting me anymore. I don't need they don't need me anymore. So by this saying, just let let's emphasize that in our relation with God. We are God's children. How many of us are doing our duties not for God but for ourselves? For ourselves. Not many, right? So as the children, they have to be grateful because just for the simple fact that our parents gave birth to us and they raised us. But no, I heard a lot of times, well, why did you bring me to life? I didn't ask you to do so, right? We are so ungrateful. We are so ungrateful, we have to be grateful that they gave us life, but we are blaming them. So the same thing we're doing with God. So why is he doing that? Why he's not doing that? Why is crime? Why is raining? Why is, why is whatever? So many other things, right? We are blaming God. We are blaming our par parents. We're never happy. We are so ungrateful with everything. So it's not only towards our earthly parents, but it's the same hatred to, towards our eternal heavenly father so and you see the picture when we analyze it it's bigger and it goes deeper and we are the same 
ungrateful and prodigal sons and daughters. That we received the gifts from God and we are using them in, I don't know, in what manner, useless sons and daughters. And we are not bringing the, the expected fruits from, from us. So it's very important, my dear ones, because everything starts from the family. So if we are not giving the respect towards our parents, then of course you cannot give the respect towards God. But if, if we are go because we are talking about this ruler of the Old Testament, the young rich man, that he was concerned about his salvation, right? So this commandment of loving and respecting your parents in the Old Testament has a very big impact on, 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 the, on the people if there was a, when anyone, either son or daughter, to, to lift his hand on his parents, I'm not, this is too extreme, but even if they would say a bad word against their parents, you know what was the punishment? Death. And this is according to the law. It's written in the Exodus, okay? It was the unrespectful children was punished with the dead. But today in our modern day, we have rights, right? Our kids, they have rights. They are picking up the phone and calling a guest against their parents, right? So where is the word of God in all this modern society? How can you tell on your parents if they have punished you for a reason? Right? Because they love you and they want you to become a human being in this life. A follower of Christ. This is who we shall become because we are the image of God. We are created in His likeness and image. And this is what we shall, shall turn into. This is the message of the gospel. This is what He wants from us. And this is what He, he told the young ruler. But the difference is that this young ruler, he respected the word of God and he respected his parents. Yes, he said, all of this I have accomplished from my youth. So he was doing all of these things, but he wanted to be perfect, to reach perfection. And this is the next step. When he said, that I'm observing all of this from my youth, then Jesus said, then it's one more thing that is missing. Sell all your, your, your properties, your riches, and give it to the poor, and come and follow me. While he, hearing this, he turned and left. He was very sorrowful. Because even though he was doing the other part, he could not give up on his properties, on his riches, on his wealth. So his heart actually was on that. Even though he superficially was following the law of God, but he loved more the, his properties, his wealth, than he loved God. And again, how, may, how many of us in our modern world we love God more than we love the dollar? Not too many, right? So it's a big problem because he said, what is your heart, right? There is your will. So if we love the earthly, the material will, then we cannot pretend for the eternal, for the heavenly wealth. This is what we shall do, to build our, our wealth in heaven. And how we do that?
by sharing the gifts and talents that we received from God. So it's pretty simple. I received, freely you received, freely give, right? But no, we're keeping it for us, right? It's mine. I can't share it with anyone. I work for it. Yes, but you work for it. But if God would, wouldn't give you his blessing, wouldn't give you health, protection, would you be able to do that? No. So then everything we have actually belongs to God. Nothing belongs to us. So when we will learn that and put our heart into eternal riches and wealth, and then we will be freed from this materialism that holds us back. So, my dear ones, let's follow the path of God's commandments and let us respect the law of God. Let us respect his commandments, his words, and let us follow his path that he himself, by taking our flesh, showed us step by step how to live a truly Christian life. That was the reason, not because he needed our flesh. No, he created it. He could create his own flesh if he needed so much, but he did it for ourselves in order to be saved, to show us the path. And we are his followers. So let us follow him step by step. And only then we can reach that point of theosis that we are created to. That was the, the reason of his sacrifice, to give us the opportunity to reach theosis, to, be, to become godlike. And that's the reason of our life on earth. Not to become wealthy, not to become smart and whatever, but to become godlike. So let us follow that path, my dear ones, and become one of those that we are seeing on the walls of the churches. We are celebrating every day on the calendar, our Orthodox calendar. Let's imitate them and become like them because they could do it, we, could, we can do it too. Yes, his, when, when they asked, who then can be saved? He didn't say that the rich cannot be saved. He said it's difficult because they can't give up what I said before. But it's not impossible. What is impossible for men, it's possible with God. So let us put our trust and hope in the eternal and divine God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.